Thanks for your company. We are coming to you live from Digital Address, GA0992539, also live on DSTV Channel 421 and Go TV Channel 144. Now, water is set to be live, but residents of the home municipality have been without potable water for the past 10 days as a result of a damage of a main pipeline that conveys water from the production point at Kweve Tonu Tuho. According to officials of the Ghana Water Company Limited, the damage of the pipeline was occasioned by the washing away of two concrete pillars holding it by River Chawe near Akrufu. Many residents have resorted to fetching water from almost dried up streams, wells and boreholes that are constantly running out because of the pressure on them as a result of the number of people fetching from these sources. It is AD 2019 and the popular yellow lit gallons known as the four gallons have again become a regular feature across the whole municipality due to the shortage of water. The shortage is said to be the worst in over 30 years. The situation is having a toll on productivity as workers are forced to queue for hours to fetch water from these streams, wells, boreholes and any available sources of water. So a number of wells down there, but then the, the wells kind of run out, they just run out. So we've been roaming, see, I just fill my tank uh, with, with petrol and then I drive around and find where I can get water, and that's it. You are in church, you are even thinking about where to get. <laughs> you don't kind of get to focus on the, the preaching, you know. Mm -hmm. Sweet, uh, I realize last week Saturday. If I go to work, I, I go to work, say maybe 10, 11, because I have three kids in the house and I have to get water to bath them, take them to class and come to work. If the water I got in the morning is not sufficient, well, forgive me, but I get to close a bit early, you see. I live like two, three, because when you come here, that two, three, you're lucky you live around 6, 7 p.m. I mean... Households are under pressure. The chores that require water are deferred with serious implications for sanitation and hygiene. If you have extra water, you're thinking about how to go to the uh, washroom, how are we going to flash after flashing? We'll look at water to bath for the kids to cook. I don't even use the water to cook that. I used to wash. And the washing too, unless you buy Omo before you can have the soapy water. And all of that, you wouldn't get it. So we are praying this is really happen. Taxi drivers are cashing in on the situation as helpless residents seek their services to get some gallons of water. Efforts by the Ghana Water Company to resolve the challenge has even resulted in the death of a technician. The deceased got drowned in the Chawe River, close to where the broken pipeline was. It's of which is one of uh, the pipeline that comes all the way from Pervet through the Bami Reservoir to the whole municipality and its environs. Uh, was washed away at uh, Akrofo. There's a big river there, and the pipe is supported on, on the piers, concrete uh, pillars. On the 18th or so, I think the, the level um, went very high, and then uh, it washed away the pillars. As a result, it collapsed the pipe. Unfortunately, we don't have the materials at that time, so we have to look for it from all of our, our systems. I think the, our major challenge is with the road. You know, this is a small road that is supposed to save the villages and uh, all of a sudden all the big trucks, instead of using the Crepe and the Aswasi roads, have decided to use that particular route to get to Hohoi, Pandu and all those square towns uh, beyond the, the, the nervous out of uh, the water. So as a result, uh, we are afraid of, you know, the nature of the road because the pipe is a rigid material, it's a 20 inch duct, uh, steel pipe, which is quite heavy, you know, resting on the weaker, you know, bridge. So, we are all waiting. We start pumping yesterday and we are monitoring the situation and see if uh, the situation will be stabilized. In the meantime, we want to talk to the health authorities to see if it's possible all those big trucks, you know, carrying cement and other sand, could be diverted to use uh, appropriate routes which they have diverted and using this particular route. Residents are getting worried as they say all the sources of water they are resorting to are drying up. 
Now, child poverty continues to be a problem in Ghana. Recent revelations by the National Development Planning Commission show that over 70% of Ghanaian children lack access to adequate welfare. This means that a few of them have access to proper security, education, and other amenities necessary for proper child growth, according to the Sustainable Development Goals. There's more in this report by John Uses, PSC, and Anayal Safo, and it's read to you. It's 8 a.m. on a Friday in a location not too far from Ghana's capital, Accra. Three boys of school going age tag along in what seems to be an endless spread of garbage. They head towards the Kole Lagoon, where odor from the polluted lagoon fills the air, oblivious to the infections and health hazards it poses. The three boys proceed into the filthy unknown no school, no supervision, and no parents there to help them properly navigate their future. This is a true story from Adubloshi, a commercial district in the greater Accra region of Ghana. Many children come to these areas as a result of accompanying their working mothers, mostly traders. Few go to school. A good number have no idea who their mothers or fathers are. Vida, a trader in the district, shares her concerns and the dangers of raising a child in such an environment. It is a really disturbing situation. I used to have children with me here, but due to illness, they could not advance their education. Many of the children here migrated from other places without their parents, and so they lived their lives anyhow since they have no one to take care of them. I think it would be prudent if governments had social interventions in place for these children. The sanitation situation here causes so many problems for children. If governments could help in any way, it would really be appreciated. The rains yield even nastier filth and influx of mosquitoes. Any time it rains, the sanitation situation worsens. I work here, but I am more concerned about how it affects the innocent children. Diarrhea and other illness are very common. It's very disturbing. The gutters are also nothing to write home about. Would I appreciate it if government help with waste management and disease control in the area? Mommy will soon turn 13. She grew up in this area and is one of the lucky few who've been enrolled in formal education. Yet, even she succumbs to the pressures of the environment. I saw some of your friends were playing in the field. Why, why is that so? Oh, but as for us, we are children. We need to play. Dr. Felix Adoyobo is the Acting Director, Development Policy Division of the National Development Planning Commission. Early childhood development, that is very critical for the present status and then the future of the child. Uh, that is something that we need to pay good attention to. The Commission's latest findings show that child poverty in Ghana has taken an upsurge. It reveals a larger percentage of Ghanaian children lack adequate access to good sanitation, health, safety and the host of necessary welfare avenues. The NDPC labels this as multidimensional poverty. Several dimensions of poverty. So the study looked at eight um, dimensions of welfare, that's how we call it, So, which included um, things like access to education, um, access to information by the children, access to water, sanitation, shelter, and uh, a host of others. There were eight of them. And we classified a child as being multidimensionally poor if he or she suffers from three or more of these eight um, dimensions. And uh, so we looked at the various age categories and for each category over 50 percent of children in that age um, bracket suffered from um, three or more um, dimensions of poverty uh, which was quite alarming. Um, at the Looking at monetary poverty alone, the number was um, about 28%. But once we delved deeper and looked at various dimensions of poverty, the average sum is well over 70% of Ghanaian children. Somewhere in Ghana, the next Bill Gates has not been fed. The next Albert Einstein has been denied science 
and the next Oprah Winfrey has not been taught the power of speech. Child poverty is real and hides in more places than we all care to admit. We need the help. We want government to help us. For Joy News, PSC Danayao Safos report. Now, the National Secretary of the International Welfare Body for Fulani Ethnic Groups, Alaji Yakubu Musabari, is calling for the arrest and prosecution of persons behind the destruction of a Fulani settlement in the northern region town of Baprugu. Speaking to Joe News on a visit to the community following Saturday's mob attack on residents, Musabari described the situation as unfortunate and disheartening. It's very, very, very hurting, you know. Um, getting there, I even wait that human beings can really act in such a manner in this very time of this world. When human rights are on the rise, that everybody knows the right of somebody, even, even if somebody commits a crime, there is the way the law is supposed to take it course. But what I saw today, I've never, it's like a war zone. A war just ended and then we came there. Houses were burned. Animals were even burned in, on life that we met there. About 35 houses burned to ashes. These children, women, the house owners are, are helpless. In fact, I can't even describe what I saw today in my life. If not on television, on war zones that they have been filming, I've never seen such thing before in my life. The security forces should pick up their tones and then bring all those perpetrators to book, so that it will it will be a deterrent to other people across the country, because such thing not supposed to happen in this country called Ghana Forest. Never, ever, ever, ever. So we are appealing to the security forces. I think we have a collaboration with the BNI and the uh, district commander, and then also uh, the chief of the of the town, also supporting to find the perpetrators of this continuous hard that happens. Now, a confrontation over a damaged rice farm ensued on Friday noon between a Fulani headsman and a local farmer at Baprugu when the farmer led two others into the headsman's settlement and attacked him, uh, accused of allowing his cattle to enter the rice farm. Now, Yakubu Abdallah, chief of Tamaugu, received the delegation. We'll bring you more on that later. You're watching Joe News today with me, Bernice Abu Bedulansa. There's more on this particular story and others shortly. Do stay. Thank you so much for staying here on News Today. Uh, let's go back to that earlier story on the uh, disturbances in Baprugu in the northern region. Uh, let's bring you that sound of Nayakubu Abdallah, chief of Tamalgo, as he received uh, a delegation from the International Fulani Group. That rests on the security services. And we'll assist them <coughs> to, to, to get to the bottom of the matter. Whoever, whether man or woman, is involved in uh, apprehended and dealt with according to the laws of Ghana. Because together with the elders of Baburu and, and then the assistant with the police from Karga, I think we arrive at a positive conclusion. The Northern Region Minister Saifu Said has condemned the attacks and called for investigations into the matter. Two days ago, we had reports on some communal disagreements in the Sanargo municipal as well as Kumbungu assembly areas, specifically between Gomu and Malishabu, and also only yesterday between Fulani communities and another ethnic groups in Bagurgu village in the Karga area. In all of this, there have been threats of destruction of lives and property and indeed in the Karga situation a number of houses were burnt and properties destroyed. Reser condemned this later 
incident involving the destruction of property in Karga and calls for the apprehension of all those involved in that act. Well, please, in the Northern Region, tell John you some arrests have been made. Here's Yusuf Tanko, Public Relations Officer of the Police there. Very happy that the media, you are asking to know what is happening with regards to the Operation Come Live that was launched and it made a very significant impact. The criminals, when we came in, you know, when they see that the security people are able to get their strategies to be able to defeat them in certain moves, they relocate to plan and launch back. We've seen that they have come back and there is a new phenomenon. You had Salif Usayed, the North PRO of the Northern Region Police. And uh, let's do some politics now. Former president and flag bearer of the opposition National Democratic Congress, John Dramani Mahama, has begun a two day thank you tour of his home region, the Savannah. The tour, according to the party's executives, formed part of preparations for his comeback in 2020. His visit which was postponed on three occasions, uh, will begin with a meeting with party executives, uh, stakeholders of the party in the region. We'll bring you more on this uh, uh, in, in subsequent bulletins, even as we follow uh, the president on that particular tour of the Savannah region. You're watching John yesterday with me, Ben, is Abu Bedulan. Some more stories after this. <laughs> Let's head to the Savannah region now, where former president and flag bearer of the NDC in the 2020 elections, John Dramani Mahama, has begun a two-day thank you tour. Uh, correspondent Isaac Mnyonga joins us with more. Hello, Isaac, where is the former president now? And if he's been speaking, what has he been saying? Hello, Isaac? Hello, Isaac, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, great. I'm asking you to tell us the status of the former president's tour and what he's been saying. Yes, the president currently made a tour of us, and he's currently at a Pahaya, a suburb of the West Central Gunja district. We having met the chief and people in Paha. The president has uh, said thanks to them for having been with him all this while, and the fact that they were able to come together and endorse him to lead them again going to the election. It's a sign that they have to pay and trust him. And it's something that he won't disappoint them. He also told them that they should bear with the current economic uh, situation, look at it, and then go to the polls and do the right thing. That is by returning him to power to come and change the, the situation for them. Mm. And uh, we understand that there will be many stops in this two-day tour. Can you give us details of that? Yes. The former president is supposed to be here for two days. And then he returned in some five districts. Out of these districts, his home district started the border. And then he will be uh, cutting some sorts, or, I mean, integrating some projects, including the regional party office, and then also that of Larbanga. They, uh, for some years, they don't have a party office. They will get one for the first time when the pre former president arrives. Also, one thing that is very key in the president visit is the recent uh, uh, parliamentary uh, primary mm. uh, that the party conducted. You know, there are some active money among the three factions, I mean, the, the contestants. So the president coming is good for them, according to some of the, the residents who give the invitations to him to come in, uh, able to solve the differences and let them unite towards the next election. Let's take a listen to them. Well, we don't have that now, Isaac. We'll bring that later. But thank you very much. Isaac Nyonga is our correspondent in the Savannah region, giving us updates of the former president and flag bearer of the NDC in the 2020 elections, John Dramani Mahama's tour of that region. Now, the Northern Regional Security Council, RECSEC, has declared war on crime following recent car snatching and other crimes in the area. RECSEC said the declaration is to restore peace, law and order in the region. Addressing a press conference this morning, Northern Region Minister and Chairman of the Northern RECSEC, Salifu Said, said a team of allied security agencies would begin operations. He tasked TV mums and opinion leaders to support security officials in flashing out the criminals. Mr. Saeed said by the time they are done with the operation, the northern region would not be attractive to criminals anymore. 
very happy that the media you are asking to know what is happening with regards to the operation come live that was launched and it made a very significant impact the criminals when we came in you know when they see that the security people are able to get their strategies to be able to defeat them in certain moves they relocate to plan and launch back we've seen that they have come back and there is a new phenomenon of car snatching and other things and the security they've gone onto the drawing board they've come up with new methodologies that they will use to use a holistic approach to address be it car snatching be it arm robbery be it whatever so you will see a very aggressive way of tackling the security because we are not going to allow any individual or group of individuals who will engage in any criminal activities that will threaten lives and properties in this region. Martina Bugri was at that press conference and joins us with more. Martina, we understand that the Northern RecSec has instituted a ransom for any information that will lead to the arrest of criminals. Give us more details on that. And um, what the minister say, did is to uh, encourage people to come out openly and give information to the police that will lead to criminals, even uh, the arrest of criminals, even though he didn't mention how much they will be giving out. He says that it's an attractive package to help people, to help um, uh, encourage people to volunteer information that would uh, lead to the arrest of criminals in neighborhoods. And he believes that if that is it will go a long way to help restore the law and order that the region needs. He says that the car snatching has been an issue that they are going to ensure that. Hello, Martina. For. Yes, please. Sorry, we missed you. Uh, we missed you there. I, the line was a bit jerky. But tell us if he made any comments on. Uh, general security in the area. I remember when uh, the police officer was killed at the checkpoint, there was uh, a sense of insecurity by many residents. Yes, he says that the operation would bring up on board all the various security agencies. And the main aim is to ensure that the region is safe for everybody to go about their duties and also encourage investors to be attracted to the area. He says they would leave no stone on 10 until they ensure that criminals are flushed out of the region. He also talked of criminal violence that have been shooting in some parts of the region. He says that the security are working to arrest those who uh, engage in these issues and ensure that they are brought to book. He says from the, today that at the press conference, that's the, the, the beginning of the action, and they would ensure that the region becomes a place where people would have peace and confidence in the security that is an absolute uh, serene area to live and work. All right. Thank you very much, Martina Bugri, there for us in the northern region. You watch watching Joy News today with me, Benis Abubedu Lanza. Coming up in business, hospitality sector to benefit immensely as Ghana Hood's Secretariat of the Continental Free Trade Area.